my name is Anna. I'm a PhD student in Lactitude to Research Group in Chemical Engineering, like uh, Maria. And today I'd like to present an introduction to aluminium graphite dual ion batteries or AGDIBs. And we'll then talk a little bit about what I plan to do. Just to let you know, I haven't gotten any results yet. This is, is purely about the background of these kind of batteries. Let me zoom in. AGDIBs are a type of non aqueous rechargeable aluminium battery, and they're interesting as potential. Uh, alternatives or supplements to lithium ion batteries and other battery technologies. And the first successful AGDIB was reported in 2015 and has since gained quite a lot of attention. This battery consists of an aluminium metal anode, a graphitic carbon cathode, and an ionic liquid electrolyte. It is not your typical rocking chair type cell, but has a dual ion mechanism. This means that during charge, and two different anions move from the electrolyte to the electrodes. At the anode, dialuminium dialumin heptachloride, Al2Cl7 minus, causes electrodeposition of aluminium metal, while at the cathode, tetrachloroaluminate, AlCl4 minus, intercalates into the graphite interferon space. And the reverse happens during discharge, of course. The ionic liquid electrolyte that is used is a chloroaluminate melt which contains both the required anions at certain conditions as shown in this anion speciation diagram in the region shaded in red. So why is it interesting to look at aluminium batteries? And then the need for batteries, which I'm sure everyone is aware of. Aluminium has a few advantages over conventional lithium and other alternative battery metals. It is the most abundant metal and third most abundant element in the Earth's crust, meaning that it is more readily available. Its abundance and maturity in other technologies make it very cheap. Aluminium also has a high theoretical capacity with its gravimetric capacity next after lithium and its volumetric capacity four times that of lithium and higher than any of the other alternative battery metals. Additionally, AGDIVs are interesting because graphite is also low cost and the ionic liquid electrolyte offers improved safety compared to lithium ion batteries due to its extremely low flammability. Of course, this relatively new technology faces various challenges. Here I will present three main ones. The first being that finding a suitable cathode material with high capacity and good stability over many cycles has been a major focus since graphene foam showed good performance in 2015. Since then, highly crystalline graphite like natural graphite flakes and synthetic quiche graphite have and been quite promising, but further improvements are needed to achieve competitive energy densities and long lifetimes. Second, the high cost of the traditionally used EMMCL chloroaluminate electrolyte um, has motivated research into the use of deputectic solvents like urea chloroaluminate or alternative ionic liquids such as trimethylamine hydrochloride chloroaluminate, uh, which are cheaper um, at comparable performance. So research into different electrolytes May, um, may further reduce this cost. Third, the ionic liquid electrolyte used is strongly acidic and very corrosive to some of the cell components, so that the stability of, for example, the current collector and cell casing are a challenge. I'm showing two examples of corrosion of stainless steel and titanium after potential dynamic tests in EMMCL chloroaluminate electrolyte. So um, this means that um, ways to protect also components or a way to reduce the electrolyte corrosivity are needed. Finally, I would like to tell you a little bit about my short-term aims to investigate these challenges. Initially, I plan to assemble my first AGDIB coin cell to become familiar with this kind of battery. I will use highly graffiti graphene nanoplatelets as the cathode, the cheaper trimethylamine hydrochloride-based electrolyte, and millet donor spaces to protect the cell casing from corrosion. Um, with the cell, I aim to get a better understanding of the electrochemical processes that occur using uh, cyclic voltammetry, galvanostatic charge discharge, and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. And I will look at the extent of corrosion and potential dendrite formation, formation using SEM. So once I've succeeded in making this first AGDIB and have played around with it a little bit, I will move on to a material overview study uh, where I will use various cathode and electrolyte material combinations and we'll test them using only galvanostatic charge discharge to obtain later on capacity, columbic efficiency 
make performance and cyclability while keeping all other parameters the same to identify the most promising materials, which I will then further investigate to understand why they have a good performance and to add to the non required specifications for ADDIB materials. Thank you very much for your attention and I will 